Okay, so this video is part three of the host file uh, lab, if you want to call it part three, or as I'm going to name this, this is going to be <coughs> part one of two of the DNS lab. So um, before I do anything else, before I talk about anything else, I'm going to go ahead and open up my Oracle virtual box. And in the host, um, in the host file lab, we modified the host file in both Windows 7 and Windows 10. I'm going to go ahead and restore these um, just back in time before the uh, host file lab. So it's kind of up to you when you want to. We're also going to be using our Windows server today, so we can go ahead and restore that if we wanted. But um, I don't think we've messed with the Windows server yet. So as we talked about, in the host file lab, modifying the host file overrides the DNS settings provided by either your ISP or like if you're using um, uh, Google's DNS server or the open DNS server, I'll talk about how to use those um, in this lab, but um, the host file overrides those. However, modern browsers have uh, started to detect like people trying to override that. Um, <coughs> also, there have been um, virus scanners and stuff that pick up on programs that are trying to modify that host file. So um, hackers or scammers or whatever you want to call them, rather than modifying the host file, which was big in the 90s and early 2000s, now set up their own DNS servers, have your computer point to their DNS server, and then they just write your traffic wherever uh, they want you to. And it's really hard for modern browsers or virus detectors to pick up that that is actually happening. Um, so we're going to kind of talk about how to set that up and how they do that. Um, now the one thing that I'm going to say is we're going to be setting this up on our Windows Server 2016 um, and we're going to be doing it on our local network but obviously the hackers and the scammers they have to do this on the big open internet and it is illegal to do this um, on the big open internet so uh, obviously the reason we're doing it is you're just having the opportunity to learn um, like what they're doing and then how to prevent it um, but don't actually do something like this in the real world it is a federal crime you'll probably go to prison so um, let's not do that all right so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load up our windows server 2016 so we're going to double click on this so let's kind of talk about what we're at <coughs> what 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 we're actually going to do here so we're going to set up on our Windows server, um, we're going to set up a DNS server on here, and we're also going to set up a website. Um, and we're going to make it so that the DNS server just um, uses actually like we can have it use Google's DNS server to route normal traffic. However, if anyone goes to uh, google.com, we're going to have them route to our website um, that's on the server. So we're going to go to, in order to do that, we got to go to input, keyboard, control, alt, delete, um, type in our password here. Now it's important to remember um, to be patient with your Windows server. I think when we set this thing up, we only gave it about two gigs of memory. Um, and because we're using the graphical interface, this thing is kind of, a, it's kind of a big bloated operating system, um, although it's still pretty widely used. Um, but anyway, um, given that, we have to give this thing a second for server manager to load. And once server manager loads, don't close out of it right away because we're going to use server manager, this program that loads by default. We're going to use that to set up our DNS server and set up our web server. Um, but we have to let this load fully. You'll notice right now if I click on this add roles and features, um, oh, it didn't give me an error, but a lot of times it might give you an error when you click on this add roles and features. Um, it might give you an error there um, and say like, hey, hold on a second. Once though you can, we're going to click on this add roles and features. Going to hit next. Role based or feature based installation. Good. Hit next. This is the server that we're going to be using. Now currently, 
I'm on a, if I go to settings here and I go to network, I'm on a NAT connection, which is why I have a 10.0 address. Um, we're going to be changing this later to bridged, um, but for right now I want to be on that NAT connection, so this is fine. And then when I hit next, um, we want to select DNS server right there and then hit add features and then it's going to give us an error saying hey basically you should have set up a static IP address for this uh, server um, you really shouldn't be installing a DNS server on this be on this machine because it doesn't have a static IP address we're going to be dealing with we're going to change the network from NAT to bridge later on in this lab so um, normally yes you should have a static IP address for all of your servers but we're not going to worry about that right now we're just going to hit continue we also want to check this web services um, web services or IIS right there and hit add features so we got that DNS and web services both checked we're going to hit next we don't need to check anything in here we're going to hit next again. We're going to hit next again. We're going to hit next again. Both of these are just, this is describing what a DNS server is right there. This is describing what the web server is. <coughs> Basically, this points, you know, changes domain names to IP addresses back and forth. Web server hosts web files. Okay, next. Um, this is all fine right there. Just use the defaults. Hit next and then hit install. So this installation process might take a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while it installs and then as soon as it finishes I will resume the video. Okay, so it says my fe feature installation was successful. Um, and by the way, this is just the, um, the computer name for this server. Um, so that's why it's on and then it's a weird thing. Okay, so I hit close. Then I'm going to go ahead and I need to shut down this machine. So I go to the Windows key, power. Hit the power key, give it a second here. Shut down. And then when you hit shut down, you have to choose something from the list. This list should be popping up shortly. I don't know why Windows Server is going so slow. I think it's going so slow because it's booting up both the DNS and IIS servers. But we need to go Start Menu. Whoops, Start, Power, Shut Down. There we go. Choose any reason why in here to shut down and then just to continue. The reason why you have to choose something is because this is a server and everything on the server is logged, um, including restart shutdowns everything that the server does is logged um, so that you know somebody who's managing the server can go back in and see hey wait a second the server shouldn't have restarted then maybe somebody's trying to hack into it or something changed that shouldn't have so um, anyway we're going to click on this go to settings and we're, now we're going to change the network adapter to bridged so we're going to change that to bridged adapter i'm actually recording this video on my personal laptop so that's why it says i have a wireless card you you'll be using the network adapter and the school's computer that's totally fine click ok double click on the server now i will say while this is booting up I'm going to have a 192.168 address. Um, that's because I'm connected to my home network, and my home network has uh, just 192.168. something. something is it gives that to all the IP addresses. Input control delete. <coughs> type in our password. Um, however, as you should know at this point, um, you guys are going to. We're going to click on no you guys should have a 10.5 address okay so it booted up that's good now DNS is all good and these are green the local stuff it's red don't worry about that DNS is green IS is green that's good so um, let's check out our IP address here because we changed it from NAT to bridged remember a NAT connection is um, a 10.0 address, a bridge connection, for you guys should be um, 10.5 probably. Change adapter options right here. OK, 
Okay, and then we got this. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to go to, um, first I'm going to go to status. <coughs> I'm just going to take a look at this. And then I'm going to go to details. And I see I actually have a good IP address. It says IPv4 address right there. Mine's 192.168. That's perfect for me. Um, however, you guys are probably going to want 10.5 right there. If you don't have 10.5, here's what you need to do. So a lot of times when you're going between NAT and bridged and all the other different types of network adapters that we use in VirtualBox, um, you need to refresh those TCP settings. So you right click on your uh, network card. You go to properties. We uncheck this internet protocol version four right there and then click okay. Okay, so now right now it'll just say unidentified network and then if I go to like status and details, it won't give us any type of IP address information. And now if I right click on this again, whoops, and I go to properties, and I come back down here and I check this TCP IPv4 and click OK. Now I should have, that should refresh your TC, whoops, let me go to settings. That should refresh, or status, that should refresh your um, IP address and all that information. <coughs> and I have a valid IP address right there. So we're good right there. So now let's set up this DNS server right here. So again, we're setting this up as a quote hacker or spammer or whatever. And the purpose of this is to redirect anyone who the normal internet will work like all the normal websites will work just fine. However, when someone goes to www.google.com, rather than going to Google, um, they're going to go to our website. And again, this will only work for people that are using our DNS server um, rather than their ISP ser uh, DNS server, Google's. Uh, DNS server are open. So we're going to talk about later, like, how do you actually get somebody else to use that? Um, so DNS, we're going to click right here on DNS. And um, actually, we need to go to, I'm, I can close out of this server manager right now. Okay, so we need to run. So I'll go to the start menu, and I'm going to type in DNS mgmt.msc, I believe, and that should bring this up right there. Open that up. Now, this is our DNS manager right here. So, we're going to set this thing up. So, we're going to right click on it and we're going to go to properties right off the bat and we're going to go to forwards. So, forwards are, it says right here, if your DNS server can't resolve something, like if this server can't possibly have every single um, domain name and IP address stored in it. Okay, so like if you go to some weird website, this, ser this server can't possibly know the IP address of that. And n not any DNS server can. There are lots of DNS servers that are all connected together. So basically, if this DNS server doesn't know the IP address for a specific um, domain name that you type in, where should it look that up? So we're going to click on Edit, and we're going to type in 8.8.8.8, .8 and you'll see that is Google's public DNS server, and we're also going to add 8.8.4.4, which is Google's alternate um, one. There's also 1.1.1.1, which is OpenVPNs, um, or Cloudflare's. Um, so any of these would work. I'm going to delete that. We're just going to use Google's for now. Okay, so basically, and I click OK, and I click Apply, and I click OK. So um, anyone who's using this server now as their DNS server, basically will all the queries will go through this DNS server. This DNS server will be like, I don't know. And then it'll ask Google. Google will tell it the answer, and then the answer will be passed through the server onto the client machine that's attached to this. So, speaking of that, let's attach a client machine to this. So I'm going to click on Windows 7 right here, and I'm going to go to Settings, and I'm going to click on Network, 
and I'm going to go to Bridged, and I'm going to click OK. And now let's double click on our Windows 7 machine. So we're going to just, um, yeah, I think that this is fine. Oh yeah, I changed uh, folder. Sorry, you won't get that error. Sorry about that. I changed the location of a of a folder, which is why I'm getting that error. Okay, um, public network is fine. Okay, again, let's make sure that we have a valid IP address before we do anything else. So I click on change adapter settings. I'm gonna click on status. Then I'm going to click on details. Again, you guys, this IPv4 address should be 10.5. something. That's something. Um, again, I'm on, I'm using my personal laptop. I'm on my home computer, so uh, this is different, but <coughs> that's okay. Um, if you don't have a valid IP address, you just right-click on this. <coughs> you go to properties, uncheck your IPv4, click OK. So wait for that to say identify network, hit properties, check this box now, click OK, and that should refresh your uh, IPv4 address and you should get a valid IP address. Okay, so now that we have a valid IP address, we want to use this computer's IP address, which is, if I come on here and I go to network settings, and I go to change adapter options, and I right click on this, and I go to status, details. So my IPv4 address is right there. 192.168.86.135. Your IPv4 address for your server is definitely going to be different. Okay, but we're going to plug this in to our Windows 7 machine. So I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to go to TCP IPv4 <coughs> and then I'm going to go to properties again and then I'm going to use the following DNS server address. And I'm going to use this address right there. 192.168.86.135. Whoops. 86.135. Okay. And then I click on, I can click OK. And I can click Close. And I can click Close. Okay. So double check that we actually got that in there, but that should be fine. Open network settings, change adapter settings. Let's click on the stat, whoops, cancel. Let's click on the status of this guy right here. And I can click on details. <coughs> and we can notice our DNS server right there now is the same IP addresses um, this machine. And again, um, your address right there is going to be very different from mine. It's just really important that these two match right there. Okay, and they do. So, um, what did that do? Well, let's see. If I open up like Firefox on this machine and I go to like google.com right now, works fine. I can like search stuff. I can go to like, X, you know, a speed test website. Everything seems to be working fine right here. Um, that's because, again, we set up forwards on this computer right here. So all of, basically this thing, is, all of the uh, domain name requests, or every DNS request, goes through this computer, goes through this server, this server obviously doesn't know the answer, so it asks Google. Google replies with the answer, and then this computer responds back to this, to our Windows 7 machine with the right information. So basically at this point, you would not know that we're passing all of our DNS information through this server, right? It's You wouldn't know everything's just working fine. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pause or stop right here. This is part one of our DNS server lab and then we're going to do part two of our DNS server lab in a separate video so um, you can just we can just save the state of these machines right now I'm going to just save the machine state um, close out of close out of these guys and then uh, we'll return you know maybe the next day or maybe you can get this both done on the same day um, but we'll go into our second uh, DNS server lab video next.